theatre for transurethral surgery in my hospital. In this room we do these surgical procedures and the patient is lying on his back on this bed with his head towards the anesthesiologist that keeps track of the patient so he feels well during the whole procedure. On this side the urologist is sitting performing the surgical procedure inside the urethra in this case. I am now going to demonstrate what it looks like when we do a transurethral resection of the prostate. The surgeon and urologist can sit down during the procedure in between the patient legs and we use this instrument. It's pretty large, but it has to be large in order to uh, be able to cut out uh, pieces of tissue so the patient can urinate easily afterwards. In the front here we have the electrical knife that carves and cuts pieces of tissue. Right close to that we have the camera with light inside. Then we have the instrument, in this case with the size Charrier 27. And you might remember the sizes from the catheter section earlier. On the other side of the instrument we have light coming in through this cable. We have electricity for cutting. And here we have fluid going in through the instrument, irrigating in front of the camera in order for us to see as good as possible all the time through the procedure. It always bleeds a little when we cut inside the prostate, so we have to be able to flush away that bleeding all the time. Now I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like at this procedure in the simulator. We are now with the instrument in the posterior part of the urethra, right underneath the external sphincter, which we are going through right now. And we are pointing at it with the electrical current loop. Now we are inside the prostatic urethra, right above the external sphincter, and we are looking at the two lobes of the prostate that is compressing the urethra and obstructing the urinary outflow. The prostate also has a posterior part uh, which, we're, which we're looking at now and we start our procedure by cutting away pieces of the prostatic tissue in the posterior part in order to open up the prostatic urethra as good as possible. When we are cutting, we are cutting all the way from the bladder down towards the verum montanum or the collicula seminalis, which we're looking at now. As you can see, it also bleeds a little bit from different parts when we cut away pieces of tissue. There are small vessels inside the prostate that bleeds and we are now stopping the bleeding from these vessels with the electrical current. After having done this posterior part we start with one of the two lobes and sides of the prostates. In this case the right side. The right side in the patient is on the left side of the picture. We are now cutting away and resecting the obstructing parts of the prostate on the right side. As you can see, the prostatic urethra is now opening up. So this should be much easier now to urinate through this urethra. The surgeon won't stop until it looks really nice and it doesn't bleed very much. Now we are starting 
on the left side of the prostate. So the left prostatic lobe is now being resected. All the time we go down to the Veremontanum or Collicula Seminalis to see that we're at the right place in the prostatic urethra. All this is to be very sure that we're not gliding down into the sphincter. If we cut in the sphincter there is a risk for incontinence in the patient afterwards and we don't want that. So now it looks really open and nice. There's also some pieces of prostatic tissue in the roof which is being cut away right now. In the end of the procedure we stop all the bleeding vessels and put in a large catheter because it will always bleed a little bit afterwards anyway. The catheter is usually removed the next day and then the patient can urinate very easily. You can see now that it's open all the way up to the bladder. So in this case the patient will experience much relief if it was obstructive when we started the procedure.